now that we have calculated the self-employment tax, um, now we can continue on. Now that we have total income or gross income, uh, now we can start to look at our deductions for AGI. Um, now, remember earlier when we were going through the list of the business expenses, there was health insurance listed for Rachel, for the self-employed uh, taxpayer. Now, here is where you are going to be able to deduct the self-employed health insurance. So, the SC health insurance is now going to be deducted as a deduction for AGI. Please note that it is not part of the Schedule C. It's its own specific line item. So we're going to deduct uh, SE health insurance here. Um, the second deduction for AGI is going to be one half of the SE tax. So we calculated uh, the self-employment tax to be $2,669, and we can take a deduction for half of that. So half of the SE tax is going to be $1,334.50. Um, again, you can always round up to the nearest dollar. So I'm going to take this to $1,335. Those are the only two deductions for AGI that we have in this problem. So we're going to subtract those out. That's going to leave you with adjusted gross income of $85,195. Now that we have adjusted gross income, now we want to deduct our from AGI deductions. Um, so remember on that, you are either going to take itemized or you're going to take the standard. So it's itemized or standard. Um, it does give us information in order to calculate the itemized deductions. So let's go ahead and, and figure out what that would be. So for itemized deductions, we'll go through the different categories. The first is medical. It tells you that the out-of-pocket medical expenses are $5,000. We know that we have to reduce that by 7.5% of adjusted gross income. So if I multiply 7.5% times my AGI, that gives me $6,390. That's actually greater than the medical expense deductions we have. So what that means is that we don't get to deduct any of that. So the amount of medical expenses that are included in itemized deductions are $0. Oh, I apologize. I've made a mistake. Uh, we have $5,000, I apologize, of doctors and dentists out-of-pocket medical expense plus $1,000 of prescription drugs. Um, those are also can be included as part of medical. Um, so that's $6,000. However, even combined, we it still doesn't exceed 7.5% floor, so we still can't deduct anything. Um, the next section are our taxes. The taxes that were paid, uh, that is going the taxes paid are going to be your real estate taxes paid on your personal residence um, so you have five thousand dollars of real estate taxes that you can deduct um, mortgage interest is also deductible as an itemized deduction so you have six thousand dollars of mortgage interest um, it also lists out interest on a personal car loan and interest on a personal credit card. Uh, if they're personal, then those are not deductible. However, if those had been interest payments related to the business, they could have been deducted on the Schedule C, but they're not. They're personal. Uh, then we have our charitable donations, $6,000. And then we have one item that goes into miscellaneous 2%, uh, and that's going to be the unreimbursed employee expense. You, that does go into the miscellaneous 2% category, so that means that it has to exceed 2% of AGI. Or you can only include the portion that does exceed 2% of AGI, which would be uh, 2296 I'm going to go ahead and round that. So for your total itemized, it's the taxes plus the mortgage interest plus the donation plus the allowable portion of miscellaneous 2%, so that should bring your total itemized to $19,296. You want to compare that to the standard deduction, which for 2012 for married filing jointly is $11,900. Obviously, that means itemized is greater, so we are going to take the itemized deductions. The second deduction is the exemptions. Your exemption amount is 3,800 for 2012. 3,800 times two gives you 7,600. 
So that leaves you with taxable income of $58,299. Once you have taxable income, then you can calculate the amount of federal income tax. Uh, that is obviously going to come from your federal tax rate schedule. Um, that is going to fall in the 15% marginal tax bracket line. So to calculate the tax, uh, your formula is going to be take your taxable income, subtract from that the 17400. You're going to take that difference and multiply it Take that difference, multiply it by 15%, and then you want to add to that difference the 1740. Again, this is just coming from your tax bracket schedule. So that should give you a total tax of 7870. I'm going to round up to the nearest dollar, 7875. So this is your income tax. Then you are going to add to this any additional tax. You do have one additional tax item, and that is going to be the self-employment tax. So do not forget to add the self-employment tax. So that is going to give you total tax of $10,544. Once you come up with the total tax, you want to see if you have made any prepayments of any kind. Uh, well, I apologize. The next step would be to then to see if you have any credits. Um, it doesn't say we have any kids. It doesn't say anything about any applicable credits. So we're going to assume that there are none. So no credits. So now we want to see if we've made any prepayments. Prepayments would come in the form of federal withholding or if it told you they made any estimated tax payments. So if you make an estimated tax payment, then that would also be a prepayment. However, in this problem, all it tells you is that he had $5,000 of federal withholding taken from his paycheck. So that's the only prepayment we have here. But again, you could see on the exam that the self-employed taxpayer made some estimated tax payments. If it says anything about an estimated tax payment, it's not a deduction, it's a prepayment, and you would account for it right here. Um, so at this point, we still owe $5,544. So this would be your tax due. So definitely things to watch out for is make sure you do account for the self-employment tax. Make sure you deduct half of it as a deduction for AGI. Make sure you add the full amount uh, in as a total tax. Watch out for the federal withholding. Watch out for any estimated tax payments. Um, the only other thing to make sure you make note of is in this particular problem, the self-employed taxpayer had office space, but it could be on the exam that the taxpayer works from home. Uh, if they work from home, then you would need to calculate a home office expense deduction. The home office expense deduction, whatever you calculate it to be, would be a Schedule C deduction. Um, so make sure you do know how to calculate home office expense deduction. Make sure you do know how to properly account for the property taxes and the home mortgage interest. Remember that a portion could be treated as a home office expense and the remaining percentage is what it would be go as an itemized deduction. Um, and those topics were obviously discussed in class. If you have any questions regarding the solution to the integrated problem, please let me know.